type a URL into your browser, what happens when you press enter? If your finger exerts a downward force of at least 45 centinewtons on a mechanical keyboard, it will compress the metal spring holding the key up. After traveling a certain distance, the housing exposes two wires to touch and complete the electrical circuit, but nothing happens. Keyboards like the GH60 shown here have a microcontroller, a tiny computer that is used to manage both the keys and the USB connection to your computer. Now, most keyboards wire their keys as a matrix grid where all the keys in the column are connected together across their inputs. So 3, E, D, and X are connected to the same pin on the microcontroller. Likewise, the outputs for all keys in a row are connected together. But for this to work, columns must be powered one at a time. So if column 14 is powered on and the rest are off, and row 3 is activated, then the only key that could have been hit was enter. If you connected each key to its own I.O. pin on the microcontroller, you would need 64 pins. But by using 14 columns and 5 rows, then you only need 21 pins, saving you 43. This chip has 25. The GH60 microcontroller will cycle through each column for at least 70 microseconds multiplied by 14 columns. You might have to wait nearly a full millisecond to detect your key press. Hence why it does nothing until it lights up your column. When it does notice your key press, it will send a digital signal for the enter key to your keyboard and ultimately to your browser. So now your browser initiates the process of retrieving the website at the given URL by creating an HTTP connection. However, HTTP connections require IP addresses, not URLs. So it needs to look up the table mapping URL host names to IP addresses using a system called Domain Name System or DNS. Your browser keeps a local cache of the recently used DNS table entries, so it'll check there first. If not found, it'll check the operating system's cache. If not found again, we need to start looking outside your computer. So far, we've pressed enter, checked the browser's DNS cache, and check the operating system's DNS cache. The next possible table location is your network's router, and then your ISP's router, and then finally, the authoritative DNS server's lookup table. 30 milliseconds into the process, and now we have recursively searched the hierarchy of DNS caches and found the IP address if it exists. Then, it will return the response, and along the way, it will start adding the newfound mapping to all the caches we previously passed. Finally, the browser can now initiate the secure HTTP session or HTTPS by first creating a TCP session to the identified IP address. So it sends a packet out address to that IP up the chain. Your computer sends it to your network router, which routes it to the ISP's router, which routes it along multiple stops within their WAN until it reaches a series of internet backbone routers. It will continue this game of hot potato and get passed from one router to another until it reaches the correct IP address for the server. The server opens your packet, which says SYN for synchronize, accepts it, and sends back a packet saying ACK for acknowledge. Your computer will send back one final ACK packet to complete the three-way handshake. TCP handles splitting up your data into multiple packets, handling receipt of packets out of order, retries, and more. You can think of it like the server now knows to expect more packets from the computer and will respond accordingly. Your browser will now send a hello packet to initiate the TLS handshake, specifying requested version, supported encryption methods, and a randomized client string key. The server sends back encryption credentials matching your browser specifications, a signed certificate, and a public key. Your browser then creates a new client private key and encrypts the client private key with the server's public key. The browser sends an all finished packet to the server that is encrypted. The server uses your key to decrypt this message, verifies it, and sends back another encrypted finished packet, thus completing the TLS handshake. The two machines now have a secured HTTPS connection. Then your browser will send the actual HTTP request over the secured TLS connection. Eventually, the server returns the requested resource the web page you were originally looking for, but it can't render it just yet. The next step is to parse it and convert it to a tree-like structure called the Document Object Model or DOM. Your browser will look for things in the DOM like pre-connect directives, external CSS style sheets, external JavaScript, images, and more. Before it is even completed parsing the DOM, it will start to queue up those requests and perform them in parallel. If those external URLs are at a different hostname, it will start the same DNS TCP HTTPS process again for each of those URLs. 
After all that, your browser has now rendered and displayed your glorious web page and you can interact with it. At this point, there may be deferred JavaScript resources to load and run, which may change the page and update your screen. All of these steps miraculously happen in the blink of an eye. And most people are never aware of the incredibly complex and magical processes that must occur on such a small time scale to see something as simple as a web page. To get this to even work required thousands of engineers, designers, and more to coordinate and collaborate over decades, all so that you can look at cat pictures.